All right. So this is going to go somewhere 400 We're, yards. Put it in that so. dead snag down there. I'll wait till we drive down there and... We'll have to repaint targets in a little while. Repaint targets, but whoever hits it first gets kicked in the nuts. Well, <laughs> I'm not even cheating. <laughs> well, we got to come up with some kind of constellation prize that it's beneficial to make people <laughs> want to hit it. Yeah, that's a terrible prize. I think you need to rethink this whole situation. <laughs> Whoever hits it gets kicked in Generally, the nuts. I think of a prize as some sort of reward. Well, <sighs> swift. let's get the ball rolling. Bro's up first. He's been waiting to shoot ever since we got here. <laughs> Far target is 450. Next gong is 300. Back it up. We got a little huh? paper target at 100 to check our zero. All you safety folks, there's nothing down there. We'll have to shoot another six, eight hundred yards to hit the river levee. Then we'd have to shoot over that and shoot a couple more miles to hit anything. Are you? I'm zooming it in. Four hundred fifty yards, two forty-three. Let it fly. That looked like you broke a chain. Still 300? Um, you want to go, let's see here. Oh, I forgot about that paint can. Shot the paint can. <laughs> that hit the can. You gonna shoot 450? Yes. All right. And I'm just guessing on my holdover. Got it. Hit it again, looks like the same spot. Okay, top to bottom you're centered. You're about four inches to the right. That could be wind at 450 yards with a 55 grain 223. Absolutely, whatever you got dialed, I think your elevation's dead on. That's eight and three quarter MOA. that I didn't see it we'll, we'll be sure and put that miss on the channel <laughs> <laughs> got to edit all the misses out so just I like edit my misses out smacking them left and right <laughs> <laughs> yeah delete that miss let's see if I can get that 450 with this set yeah same spot as the two shots ago. That's a kill shot though. Up and you're up and down. Your elevation's dead on. You're just a couple inches to the right of that. We hole. got a crosswind here coming from from left to right. Man, you just gotta love a good old Pika. Best guns in the world. For the money. For the money. That's a fact. You ready, bro? Yeah. Okay. Well, the can fell out. I guess you hit dead center. I think it did. Got it. What we learned today? Other than my Nosler hat is awesome.
Take a raffles are the best bang for the buck. Take a raffles. Go take it. <laughs> I wish they'd sponsor our channel. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, I'll take a left hand T3X and 243 win. You already got a 243 win. No, I, have, I don't have a left hander T3X, so. Venture out, man. One caliber brother. I like it. I, I'd take a T3X tactical and 223. <laughs> you already got a T3X 223. But I want the tactical. No. Oh. Because it looks cool. Well. I think I want a... I guess I just walked right in front of your camera shot, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I set it up over here where you were working, and then I turned it on, and you went over there. Oh. So, what, we learned that Tika rifles are the best rifles, but we didn't learn that. We already knew that. Yeah. Best rifles for the money. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can spend all you want to spend, but for the money, Tika rifles. Vortex Viper Scopes. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Two, two one. Well, y'all still got some growing up to do. But. Best bang for the buck. <laughs> I started to say it might be a vortex. Now I got a Burris on one, and I got a. You got a vortex on one of them, don't you? No, I don't think any of those have. A, I got a vortex on a couple other guns. Oh. So 300 yards, dead. Shot a coyote at 300 yards before we even started tuning up at 300 yards. Yeah. So. In the eyeball. In the eyeball. <laughs> Where I was aiming. I'm sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> it's always easier to say where you was aiming after you see where you hit it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't really. I, I heard he was aiming at the head. And, and I, he pretty much covered the entire coyote. Yeah, I thought it might hit the chest, and then he hit no. an eye, and he was aiming for the eye. Yeah. I told you I was aiming over the head because I thought it was three to four hundred yards. Worst case scenario, it was four hundred. I hit it in the chest. So what's the new rules? If he misses, we get to kick him in the nuts. Good luck with that, boys. I got the gun. There'll be no kicking in the nuts. I got the gun. So there'll be no missing? Y'all can kick you each other in the nuts. another round in the barrel. By that time, I'd have done got them. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all stand over there. I'm pretty quick. Hey, there's a rock on top of it, too, so. All right. It could land on a I'd truck. aim dead on it at that range, bro. Maybe on the lower half. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, look at him move. He don't want to get kicked. <laughs> I was nervous about getting kicked in the nuts. He missed. <laughs> I didn't even see where it hit. Guns he, off. He, yeah, right. I'm ringing a target with it at 400. <laughs> Guns off. You're ringing a 15 inch target with it. You <laughs> shot to the left. That rock, I, I think it just kind of flipped over to the right. Well, there you have it, man. Mark that off your bucket list. You shot some tanner out. <laughs> I missed on the first shot. <laughs> what are the odds? Pretty you'll, good, actually. I think you'll pay up eventually. Part of being the older brother is you got to pick up the toys after your little brother and his friends go home. But that's okay. I'm glad Keys came out with us today. I'm glad my brother came over and shot. They had things to do. I said, hey, I'll go pick up the targets. Anytime you get out and you stretch the distance of your rifle, you shoot beyond what you would typically do sighting in. You shoot beyond what you typically shoot hunting. Um, it's always fun. Let me take you over here and show you this coyote I shot before we started shooting. So I pulled up here this morning. I was trying to decide how to lay out the range. I knew that the, the guys on the farm had cut some uh, had cut some hay, and I knew we could shoot. 
I just didn't really know how to how to lay it out where we had safe places to shoot toward. And as I pulled up here, I saw a coyote out in the middle of this field. So I immediately grabbed my 223 and got out of the truck and went around the edge of the fence. It started trotting, but it wasn't real alarmed. I thought it's going to stop. It's going to stop. It's going to stop. Well, when it stopped, it did, and it turned around and looked at me. So I had it quartering to me just because it turned around to look back at me. I wasn't sure if it was 300 or 400. I didn't have time to range it. So what I did was I held the crosshairs just a couple inches over the top of its head, maybe five inches over the top of its head. And I thought if it's 300, I'll hit him in the neck. If it's 400, I'll hit him in the chest. And I shot and he dropped. I got up here, I hit him right in the head. So I ranged it from here back to where I shot. It was 307 yards. So a little tip for you, if you're shooting at a varmint, and I wouldn't do this at deer. I would know the yardage or I wouldn't shoot. But with varmints, if they're facing you and you're unsure if it's three or four, hold three for the head. And then if it's four, you hit somewhere in the chest. Or if it's 350, you'll hit somewhere in the chest. If it's not quite there, you'll hit it in the neck. Trying to get that vertical kill zone will get you more coyotes if you're able to do it. So... That's, uh, that's last year's female. It don't look very big, uh, but it's just got summer coat. Anyways, one calf eater down.